Hello everyone. Coming to you live from my very messy hotel room in Kuala Lumpur. I wanted to talk about how to protect yourself from getting hurt. Okay, we're gonna be going into setting boundaries, having standards, and also just <laughs> realizing that you can actually choose to not be hurt. High standards protect you from low quality experiences. It's true. And if you're someone that is very, very afraid of being hurt again, just know that low key, half of it is in your control. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you got out of a really bad relationship, okay? You saw the red flags from the beginning, you kept giving that person chances, and you ended up getting hurt. Looking back, you can probably say that it was a little bit on you. You saw the red flags and you chose to ignore it. Every person, or most people at least, they have red flags and we ignore it for different reasons. Maybe they're attractive. Maybe we were already attached and didn't know how to let go. Maybe they had money or something that you liked. But it's your responsibility to acknowledge those red flags and then GTFO. So when I came out of my first ever relationship, I would not actually say that my boyfriend at the time hurt me. I hurt myself. I hurt myself by being with him, by base, and by staying with him. And that truly traumatized me. And I think to this day, I had never fully forgiven myself. However, I have never actually made the mistake again of seeing a red flag and then, you know, dating that person. I see a red flag, I don't give you a chance, I'm gone. You know, I don't like people who say, oh, maybe like just try, give them a chance, get to know them more. No. No, I am not putting myself in a position again to get hurt. And I will say this, I am only willing to get hurt if I think that person is worth getting hurt for. AKA, let's say you fall in love with a person, you don't you don't really think they have red flags. Naturally, you can't avoid getting hurt in all arenas. So let's say, you know, you're in a relationship with them, certain things happen, you get hurt, whatever. I'm willing to get hurt in that scenario because it was worth it. But you know when it's not worth it? When you see the red flags, when you know they're not the type of person you want, yet you continued to waste your time on them. And you see those TikToks where it's like fumbling the guy who was perfect for me and then the girl's like totally unbothered or fumbling the guy that was in my league, unbothered. And then it cuts through fumbling the guy who I was out of their league, fumbling the shit guy. And you know why we actually feel emotion towards the latter? It's because we know that we shouldn't have been with them. We know that we shouldn't have even been wasting our time on them. And that's why it hurts. That's why we are bothered by it. After that breakup, I was so traumatized. Genuinely, I didn't forgive myself. I was like, oh, Simone, you're such an idiot for staying this long. I was 19, by the way, first relationship. You saw the red flags, yet you stayed. And I really, like, I really didn't forgive myself. And I was terrified of this repeating until there was at some moment in time, I realized I could choose to not go through that again. And quite frankly, I have not gone through that again, or I have not gone through anything remotely similar because now I have boundaries. Now I see red flags in five minutes. I can see it so clearly go watch my how to get over someone video i go into red flags a little bit in there but quickly what i said in that video was that it only takes one tiny red flag for you to extrapolate on that data for example let's say you're sick when you're not feeling very well and you bring it up to that person and if they completely ignore it or you can tell they don't really care you can extrapolate that to be like Maybe they're not going to be that caring in the relationship. Maybe they're not that attentive as a person. And I find this to be very true. Guys, I've collected my data and I'm a psychology student. It's very true. It doesn't just stick in one arena. I go, it, it's everywhere. How one person does one thing is how they do everything. Just based on the fact how one person does one thing is how they do everything, you can see red flags very, very quickly. And then you can like decide if you want to leave or not, or put up with it or not put up with it. For example, there was this guy I was talking to recently and he was honestly great in most areas, but there were some things I couldn't ignore. Like right now I have some jaw issue where like my jaw fucking pops out of the socket. It's displaced. Anyways, this dude, he kept wanting to call me and this was around the time where my condition developed and I got diagnosed and I was very upset and I didn't want to talk to anyone. This dude calls me, calls me, calls me. Hello, can we talk? And I'm like, no, 
I've got this thing going on right now and I can't really talk. And you know what his reply is? It's not like, oh my God, I'm sorry you're going through that. Or, or how are you doing? What can I do to help? His response is, how about I call you and you just listen to me speak and I just want to see your face. So like right off the bat, I can extrapolate that data. He will put himself first, lack of attention, lack of care. Versus one of my other friends, we went out to dinner and he was like, so worried about my issue and he's like i will only order soft food for you he was worried about me flying he's like okay do these things to help your ear pressure and you see that is someone who is caring and you want someone that is caring so guys it's just little things you need to watch how people react to things you do give you another example there was this guy i knew he was wealthy okay he was a footballer he was on like a 30 million pound contract don't even bother going through my following we don't follow each other but he was like weirdly really bitter and jealous towards me i remember i was like oh i'm in thailand at the moment and he goes must be nice he was always cold never happy for me and i'm thinking bruv must be nice being on a 30 million pound contract per year and yes from that little thing i could extrapolate and i talked to him for a bit it did play out in the way i expected where he was bitter very jealous he was not happy with his life and he low-key did not want me to be happy i have a lot of peace in my life knowing that getting hurt is in my control like i said i will get hurt if i think that person is worth it because i will get hurt in a different way i'm not going to get hurt for myself by going and being with someone that has red flags that I ignored because I think getting hurt from yourself it is so much worse like guys if I got into a relationship right now where I saw someone's red flags and I ignored it I will never ever forgive myself I will truly never fucking forgive myself because at the end of the day you protect yourself and if there is no one else protecting me I'm going to protect myself and it's the same for you so you really need to set these boundaries oh my god I can't even describe how many times I meet up with a subscriber that has boy issues. You know, I, I meet my subs when I travel and unfortunately, a lot of the time these people treat me like a fucking therapist. And then I never see them again. Anyways, so they tell me their boy issues and then they'll say to me, yeah, I know I shouldn't see this guy. Like they'll tell me about the most horrific man you've ever heard of. Like cheats on them, blah, blah, blah. Simone, I know I shouldn't be with this guy, but, but xyz good qualities but he hurts me so much but he cheats on me every day and i'm like fuck. i'm like how do you even watch me how do you even watch me how do you even say you are subscribed to me when you're doing things like this people make excuses people make excuses when they like someone i don't make excuses because i'm so traumatized by what i did to myself when i was 19. i truly think some people need to go through a traumatic breakup where they betrayed themselves in order for them to learn their lesson. And I'm so grateful that I learned all of my lessons in my first relationship because I never made the mistake ever again. I have never settled. I will never settle. I don't give my energy and my time to someone who I don't think is worth it as well. If I see red flags, I don't stick around to the point where I'm invested in them and then I get hurt or attached. I don't do that to myself. And that has brought a lot of peace into my life. Now, like I said earlier, you can't avoid getting hurt, but it's a different type of hurt, right? If you're, say, you know, you met someone you're in love with, you think they're a great person. Naturally, I think in the relationship, there will be little things that hurt you. It, you can't be avoided. Maybe they do something you don't like. Maybe you keep telling them to do something and they don't end up doing it. You get hurt, okay? But that is very, very, very different to the type of hurt where you're betraying yourself and you're betraying your standards and your boundaries and whatever you stand for. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna quickly film a lot more videos right now. <laughs> Love you guys. Have a great rest of your day.